Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the much requested Asset Forge. Now, this is a tool from Kenny of Kenny and L fame, um, also known as Asset Jesus. He's the guy that makes all of those free uh, graphics packs that you've heard about. There was one just done a couple of weeks ago where he released them for free for uh, 24 hours. Well, this is a tool that he's made and it is completely aimed at kit bashing 3D models. And now we're going to jump in and take a look at it. Now, you're going to find me gushing over this program because I think this is actually the perfect program for certain people. And most people are uh, not modelers. So if you're looking at creating assets for your game, but you lack ability, this is the perfect tool for you. Now, even if you do have some skill, this actually still can be used to create base meshes um, and uh, sprite work and so on. It is just a great tool all around. So I'm going to be gushing for the next 10 to 15 minutes. If you're wondering if you should buy Asset Forge or not, the answer is probably yes. Yes, you probably should. All right. So what we're looking at today is Asset Forge 2.0. Now, Asset Forge is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. However, there's version 2.0 that we are looking is currently only available for Windows. Mac and Linux are coming soon, TM. I don't know exactly when that is. And the big thing that is in 2.0 is Lua scripting. We're going to look at that in just a few minutes. But first, let's look at Asset Forge itself. And the entire idea behind it is you build with blocks. Now I have the premium version here. The premium version contains about 10% more blocks than the basic version. Uh, the basic version itself, we'll get into pricing in a bit. Um, but basically, if it's got a little tick down here, uh, that means it's a premium only asset. You can also create your own uh, blocks and, and assets and such to work with. So if you don't like the, the set that you've got here, you can come in and create your own. So I'm going to go ahead and we're in the aircraft category here. You'll notice I've got a bunch of different categories. So if I was working on, say, um, a building, and then we've got building things to work with. But come back here, we'll go to aircraft. So here we've got our base. So see, we've got a number of different cockpits to work from. So... Uh, we start with this cockpit and we'll just paint. So we just drop that into the world. Uh, we can move it around. You see we've got points this way. These are for scaling. These are for moving. And this is more for a freeform move. And you can just kind of drop it into your world. You can hold down the Q key and then orbit like so. You see it's got snapping settings built in. So we just snap to 90 degrees. You can also control your snap settings up here. So your movement, your rotation, so on configuration are all done up here. You've also got the ability to mirror things and rotate that way. Um, but yeah, so we just brought in, we've got our cockpit, right mouse button, I can orbit around in this world. So there's a cockpit to start with. If we wanted to, we could squeeze that guy down or up, make it however big we want. And I'm just going to go ahead and just undo that. So we've got our default size. And now we come in here. So let's say we got, oh, there's our hull. So we select hull and we just drop the hull in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this over again without moving anything. So everything's aligned on the same axis. So I don't really have to worry about any of that stuff. So now I'm going to drop a hull in and then we can just go ahead here, let me start scratch. So I haven't moved anything. So just come in first, drop in our cockpit unchanged. And then I'm going to go in, drop in a hull. And you'll notice, boom, we just kind of snapped in place. So there you go. Now we've created a more complicated mesh. Say we want to do some more hulling like so. And now we want to start adding some things on the side. So let's do a um, engines. So we'll do a turbine engine. And we can drop a turbine engine right there. And then we could also come here and we could go ahead and do a copy and paste. See so your, your normal stuff's available there. So I copied, do a control V paste, and then we'll drop that on the other side like so. So now we've got a couple of thrusters going on. And now we need to add a, uh, let's see, a rudder with sides. Sure, we'll put that in. We'll drop that guy on top of our jet like that. Say we wanted to offset that slightly, we could move that guy back like so. And you just kind of keep building together. It's like building and 3D modeling using Lego bricks. So you come in here, we could add some wings in. We've got a whole bunch of different start things to work from. In fact, we've got two pages when it comes to aircraft. But that is how you go about building your models. And you basically, if you've ever done any model kit bashing, this is sort of the idea. So here we've got some landing, some, I don't know actually what that is. Uh, we can move that in or we can snap that down to the bottom or anything we want. We can just go ahead and delete it. But that is kind of the idea how it works. And then we come in here. Once we've got it done, we can go ahead and start. And this is going to change based on the number of bricks we've got. But if we want to change out the color of things, we can do so. So let's change out our cockpit. So let's make our cockpit like jet black. Uh, and then whatever that setting. Oh, that's the inside of our intake. So you've got control over all of the various different settings you worked with. Um, you've got shader options. So you can do a gradient or an unlit shader or a standard shader. Um, you've got some predefined textures going on. So if we wanted, we could take the, our white surface here and we could make this guy out of wood. 
imply a wood texture across our object. So if you're going for that wooden toy look or whatever, when you're going, obviously you're going to get a very specific blocky art style out of this, but you can customize the heck out of everything you're creating. So if you do not have artistic ability to try and create something like what we have just done in Blender or Max or Maya, I could probably do this particular guy in about I don't know, two or three minutes as an experienced artist. But if you've got no idea what you're doing, this is going to take a very long time. And if you're starting with this particular art style, once again, you could bring your own um, blocks in. So if we want to say we want to do an air intake over here, uh, we could do so. We've also got, again, the ability to customize our look at any particular time. So like say, so say if I want to jump these guys in, squeeze down this guy. So you don't have to be you know, stuck to the look that they're going with. So then I can come back to this guy right here. We can squeeze it in nice and tight. And then we could put them right there. So let's just scroll that down a little bit. And then we can snap this guy over to that surface right there. I moved you across where I didn't want to. This is where you would probably want to use the uh, single axis movement. Uh, but it gives you an idea. So you could place these guys in the... Um, you know, the side to have ports going down there. Let me just try and get him back up here like that. And then you could duplicate that, put that over to the other side, and you can start creating more complex looking models and shapes as a result. And again, you got control over the material. We got a number of different predefined. So if I want to go with say a metal look instead, could have done that there. And then the cool thing, and this is just the beginning, this is how you go about creating your base meshes or base objects. But once you've got something you like, well, we come up here, we've got a couple of different options. First off, we can just export it as a 3D model, and we can have it come out as OBJ, FBX, DAE, GLTF, or STL. So that covers off most uh, every single 3D modeling application under the sun, supports the uh, wavefront object format at this point in time. And FBX and DAE are uh, pretty well supported as well. The cool thing is here, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll export this guy out as GLTF. So we got it, we can set which direction is up. We can have it scale. Different game engines have different size stuff going on. Uh, we can have it uh, merge out the textures, like uh, merge out the blocks so they're all together or not, and we can have it export the textures. And once we're good with something, go ahead, export that out. I'll call this uh, Ugly Jet, like so. And then we'll fire up Trusty Old Godot. Oh, actually, it's in my downloads folder, like this. Get a Godot project going. All right, so here's Godot 3.2. And to give you an idea, here we go. Got a scene going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and into my scene. Let's go to our temp folder right there where we exported that guy out. As you can see, I've, I've exported out a couple of them in the past. We'll dump that ugly jet into here. All right, so there we are in Godot. There is ugly jet. And, oh, I need to create a 3D scene, my bad. All right, so boom, ugly jet. There you see, looks like what we expect, boom. Done, awesome. So you can get objects out of and into your game engine of choice in literally seconds. And you got a number of different options available as well. So that was, again, a GLTF file out to Godot, but you could also do you know, FBX for um, Unreal or for Unity. Um, and then OBJ for just about literally everything. So that is it. You've also got options for 3D printing. You've also got pre-configured for Unity. Uh, mostly, I think that's to set the uh, the Y up in the scaling size so that works right with Unity. Uh, but yeah, that is how you can export out in one way. And the next way that we got, and this is actually really cool, you can come in here and you can do a sprite export. So you see here, we got a bit of a, a preview of what it looks like right here. We can position it slightly. So let's move it. We can move it one unit in the X, you see like that, and then we'll move it one unit, oops, I wanna do one unit, one unit in the Y, so it's roughly centered like that. We've got our angle done, so we're using a 45 degree isometric. Uh, we can change that out however we want. We can change how close to move in or out from our sprite, like so, and then what I can do is do a couple things, like I could change the default lighting that is applied to the scene, but here's where it gets really cool. So we come in here and I can say, okay, make this guy in eight different directions, 512 by 512, sure, that works for me. Come out here, I'll do this into a new folder here. Result, all right, fine, new folder. I'll put it in new folder. So there you go, we just exported this guy out, eight of them, so I come in here, go to new folder, and there you see, we've got it rendered as sprites in eight different directions. And this thing, this kind of stuff is really time consuming and annoying to work with. So here we go. Now you're gonna have a bit of a challenge. You're gonna have to get it so that, you know, it's centered correctly so that you can use it as a sprite in your thing of choice. So this this angle, it wasn't necessarily orbited. So we'd rather have this guy slightly over here. And you can control that using the rotation settings, the distance and the position or whatever. But the process of creating an eight way or a 16 way sprite, you know, 
you know, basically what you're doing is you're orbiting it and rendering a sprite out. This is one of those things that you will do if you're using a sprite based graphics, you know, um, in a pseudo 3D effect. And this kind of just makes it a no brainer for you. It's, it's very cool in that regard. Uh, we've also got the ability to find new materials. So we use our own so far, you can create your own as well. And then the cool thing here, and this is where we're going to get into the 2.0 specific functionality, is there's also Lua scripts. And this is actually pretty powerful stuff. So I'm gonna go here, it's installed in my download. So it's right here. Um, as you're gonna see that we've got a couple of script options here. So we've got three of them. I'll show you all of them in action. We'll start here with the car generator and boom. That script just created this car. Even cooler, and here's where you can start seeing the power of it. So if you're creating a procedural style game, and this is you know uh, the tool you're going to be using, here you go. We just procedurally generated this building. So this building is made out of a number of different blocks. So you know, coming over here, um, we got all these different categories here: primitives, roofs, and so on. So if we were here in the roof category, I could add roof pieces so this is built up of all those various different pieces like that is an individual piece that was used to create this building same with you know the corners the corners were all put together the wall segments the window segments they were all layered together to create this building effect now the cool thing is this is actually being done via script so let's just go take a look at that now nope downloads downloads uh asset forge scripts you see it's straight out luo scripts so here's the building generator script and oh i'm in the zip Let's get out of the zip and go into the actual directory. All right, let's try that again. All right, so here we go. So here is the building generator we were just looking at. Let's open up the code. You can see it's a straightforward Lua script. And why are you not showing what I want? All right, here we go. So here you can see this is the script. It's using um, Lua built-in functions like randomizing for math, um, but clear out the model in case there already is one, set some stuff up, but basically, you loop through for all the floors, create the different floors, create the walls. So you see here, you can use, you're, you're creating here a simple loop over this script and you're creating, using randomization, uh, different roofs. Here you're creating different um, uh, wall stuff, you're creating your corners and so on. So there's your corners being created. So this whole thing is actually just being created using a simple Lua script. We can also do that with the car script over here. This is a, a kind of a simpler one because there's less random going on. But basically, you're just building the pieces out of um, you know the named blocks that are there, and a little bit of logic that goes with it. So you can quickly turn uh, Asset Forge 2.0 into a procedural object generator. Really cool stuff there. And then I didn't show you the final one, and that is simply a golf course generator, like so. As you see, the performance is is just great. Uh, it runs on a pretty minimal computer. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it. The only thing I haven't really done is shown you all the various different blocks and pieces that are available. There's a ton of them in here. As I mentioned earlier on, I'm in the premium version. So the ships here section, for example, these pieces, um, there, there's nothing premium going on. But if I go down here, we're in the swords category. Again, nothing premium, but if you need to build a sword, there's a tip. There's the middle part of the blade that you'd snap under the tip. Like so, and then kind of just build it together. You drop in a hilt and, and so on. Uh, but you'll notice there's no premiums there. We're getting into vehicles. There's a premium. So once again, if it's marked with the little skillet -y thing at the bottom, this asset here is a premium. And it's really, that's the only distinguishing fact between the premium version and the not premium version. So now we're gonna move on to uh, price and help. So the cool thing is come up here, help, documentation, community, and guide stuff is available. The documentation is all online. So here we are. If you want to check out Asset Forge, um, well, this is from Kenny.nl under the tools category. And it kind of goes through some of the features. We, we showcase pretty much everything we just saw. Um, like the rendering, the multiple sprite batching, the, the materials, the building things together, like virtual Lego. If you want to grab it itself, it is available. It's over on assetforge.io. Uh, if you want to buy it, it is available in two prices. Uh, you can buy it for 20 bucks. Uh, it's a one-time payment, uh, DRM free. Now this guy, the first version of Asset Forge was released in 2017 and everybody's received free upgrades since then. So if you bought this in 2017, you haven't had to buy a new version since. So every version that has ever been done, it's been a one-time purchase. The deluxe version has all of the free versions, plus again, that 10% additional blocks. 
um, and that one is $39.95. In some ways, this is a, kind of a way of just saying thank you for it if you wanted to pay a little bit more money. Uh, you, you get a couple of extra blocks, but it, it's not a huge difference. Um, the the store themselves are hosted on itch.io, so if you've already got itch.io account, you don't need to do anything extra to buy this guy, uh, and you can rely on itch.io. Uh, do keep in mind, 2.0 preview is still only Windows only. The 1.3 version is um, available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Hopefully, the 2.0 version preview will come soon. Now, the interesting thing is if you actually go look at it, you're going to see... Some, some dead giveaways at what this was created using. Uh, and this is actually an application that is built on top of the Unity game engine, which is getting increasing, increasingly common. Uh, the materialized texturing tool is also built on top of Unity, and that's an excellent tool. And I've also showcased some material generators recently that were built on top of the Godot engine, uh, plus RPG in a box and so on. So building tools on top of game engines is kind of becoming more and more normal, which is kind of a cool development. Also, if you're interested, and in all honesty, you're not going to need this for the most part, other than you know, you're going to learn some shortcuts like spacebar short rotates the bar, um, and you've got things for like um, snapping to a face and so on. Uh, so placement can be, you know, I, I showed you in kind of a, a painful manner when I'm dragging things in and around. There's actually options to like snap things to other things. Um, so do be aware of that. You can also, again, rotate using the space bar. But that's all available in the help. There's full, full help documentation here, but it's a super uh, straightforward and simple tool. Uh, you got your hotkey support is available and right here. And that's kind of it. Uh, that's, it's a very straightforward, purpose-built tool. If you have minimal artistic ability and you want to create uh, things and, and you're content with this style, this is about the easiest way of creating models. And you do have just enough customizability to it that you can create your own look and art style, especially with your ability to bring in your own materials or your own textures or whatever to work with. Um, as you can see here, since we have a lot more things in the scene, we have a lot more colors to work with that we were working with earlier on. But again, you can bring in your own colors, you can bring in and create gradients, you can define everything yourself. And you've got a lot of uh, fine-tuned control over each individual piece. So again, you can shrink it down, you can move it around, you can scale it up and so on. Um, and you can create something that looks different from what someone else creates with this tool. I know I'm going to be using Asset Forge in the future when I need to like spit out some art assets for a tutorial, for example. I don't think there's any way that I could do this faster, even though I actually know how to use uh, Blender and Maya and so on and so forth. Uh, this is just still that much quicker. And if I had no ability to use those tools, you know, obviously there are limitations here. There's no ability to do animation here. You're not going to be creating people or organic objects in this system. Uh, but if you can work around those um, those areas, it's an excellent tool that I would highly recommend to most people. All right, so that is it. That is Asset Forge from Kenny NL, uh, an excellent tool. It just works really, really well. I'm quite impressed with what I saw, and with the 2.0 release, this um, this generator stuff, it, it's really cool. You can. Uh, it opens up a whole new op world of opportunity, especially when people start sh uh, sharing their scripts and stuff like that. Um, it, it's not really that complicated. It's one of those things that you can start from one of their base scripts and kind of modify it in your own way. And then if you start wanting to, so if I run that script again, we're going to get a slightly different car. So you notice there is a randomness in there. So if you wanted to basically start creating a ton of different cars for your card game, you can literally do so using a script like this, you know, as we just kind of keep going and we keep getting different results. And there's where procedural generation is such a wonderful thing. So if you needed to populate it, so you could go back into this guy and, and, you know, maybe change out the colors and have them look completely different that way or anything that is generated, you can ultimately come in and modify it yourself. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted. There we go. So if you want to come through, uh, you can do so. So anyways, that is it. That is Asset Forge with the 2.0 functionality, that new Lua generator. Some really cool and powerful stuff there. I do highly recommend you check this guy out. All right, I'm done gushing. That's it for now. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.